biomedical engineering researchers at Johns Hopkins University are working to transform heart patient care. They can now create a personalized digital model of a patient's heart, a digital twin, and use artificial intelligence to help better predict which patients are most at risk of sudden cardiac death. The technology is aimed at improving clinical decision-making, says Professor Natalia Treyanova. We would like the doctors, when they make decisions for treatment, to use our digital twin to develop the optimal treatment. When they want to make a prognosis, how the patient trajectory will be, or what is the risk of the patient of developing an adverse outcome of sort, we would like them to use our AI algorithms. Heart disease is the leading cause of death worldwide, according to the World Health Organization. Treyanova's research looks to cut those deaths using an algorithm based on each patient's scans. We do um, MRI, contrast-enhanced MRI of the heart, and then we combine that contrast-enhanced um, MRI with all the clinical data that's known for the patient. At the end, this is combined with survival analysis, and we can tell over 10 years what is the risk of a patient of having sudden cardiac death. Unlike segmented images most often used today, Trianova says using whole images of the heart produce more accurate predictions of which patients need defibrillators. So we provide these deep learning algorithms that are multimodality. They represent the patient's condition much better. At the Johns Hopkins Sydney Kimmel Comprehensive Cancer Center, Dr. Victor Velkolescu is leading research into developing new ways of detecting early stage cancers. The technologies to date, unfortunately, don't allow you to do that. So we've had to think of new ways to do that. And the stuff we've been developing, I must say, is almost like a space age kind of technology. The team observed that cancer cells grow and replicate more chaotically than normal cells. So when those cells die, they leave behind telltale characteristics of fragments of DNA circulating in the blood called cell-free DNA. In contrast, fragment patterns in people without cancer are more uniform. Using machine learning, the team developed blood testing technology to detect these highly variable patterns, known as Delphi, combining genome-wide sequencing of single molecules of DNA shed from tumors. We look in the blood, we identify molecules of DNA called cell-free DNA, and we look for the profile or the patterns of this cell-free DNA as a way to identify those individuals who have cancer versus those that don't. AI has the advantage of being able to take the millions and millions of pieces of cell-free DNA and the patterns that come from these and ultimately come up with an algorithm that can distinguish individuals with cancer versus those that don't. Velkulescu says improved blood tests could lead to greater cancer screening worldwide. The thought here is that a simple blood test would really increase the number of folks that could be detected to have an elevated signal uh, of this biomarker, and that would lead them into this pathway of then getting imaging and the various diagnostic workup. With the use of artificial intelligence in medicine growing, there are concerns among medical ethicists about how emerging technologies should be deployed. I just want to make sure that we're testing to know it works. In the same way that we have a lot of procedures and norms and standards set to test a new drug before it is uh, implemented and available for patients, we should be thinking through the same sort of safety and efficacy standards for AI tools in medicine as well. On artificial intelligence, World Health Organization guidance recommends transparency about the intended use of machine-manipulated data, protections against cybersecurity threats, and a rigorous evaluation of systems quality to ensure that digital healthcare products do not amplify biases or errors.